Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. Today we're looking at a delay, and this particular one is from TAL, so it's TAL's Dub X. There have been various versions of this uh, over the years. Uh, this is the, the latest version, and in theory, the, uh, the best version available. It's an interesting device with some possible flaws, but if you are able to work past those or put them aside, then I think there's an awful lot that's positive about this delay, bearing in mind that it's, it's pretty cheap and pretty easy to get your hands on. So, like a delay, we just expect that it's going to carry things forward into time. The difference from one delay unit to another is really a combination of workflow and how that sound gets carried forward in time. And the limits or the frustrations that I have on this or the, the concerns I have on this are just in that workflow. And workflow can be just a really personal sort of a thing. Uh, but in terms of sound, I think it does a wonderful, wonderful job. Tal, of course, we've looked at uh, most of uh, his product line. The Dub X, it's, as I said, remake of popular freeware plugin. Uh, and this time it's you know, sort of supposedly the best version of it. I have used one of the earlier versions, but I just didn't get there, which is the same issue that I have with this. But it's it's not a bad problem, really. Ultimately, you've just got to accept it for what it is. But delay units are my favourite uh, single effect of anything, you know, absolutely any other effect. Out there, delay to me is the is the number one. It's the most important thing. So, I've got a lot of delay units, and to me, it's pretty important that the delay when that I have becomes very much part of what I want to achieve, and I just have to adjust with this to get there. In terms of pricing, well, it's pretty darn cheap at uh, US twenty five plus tax if that's a applicable in your country, we got to say that it's not an expensive device. My advice is go to TAL, download the official thing, try it out, see how you go. Looking at the features of the device, well, most people are going to go to presets. One of the things that I've really liked about a lot of the other TAL devices, the synths and what have you, is that here, there's been the ability to choose what the default patch is going to be. So in other words, when you, whenever you launch this device, this is what it will give you. This doesn't have that feature, which I gotta say, seeing I know that he has the technology there, but hasn't implemented it, I gotta say, is a disappointment. Because, as you will see, I find his architecture or the way that his default patches are set up not to be to my liking. And that ability to change it to something that I like would change my tendency to open this. There are a pile of presets, and as such, they are good in that they show different things that you might get the device to do. Now, as I commonly say, please do not think that presets and mixing have anything in common at all uh, because if you go saying oh, I'll, I'll just grab this preset and apply it you, you haven't made mixed decisions okay maybe you might say I'll grab this because it's a bit close and I'll adjust but I, I don't know I'm far more of the know how something really works know what your song really needs and build that from scratch than the just toodle about a little bit. But there are presets there and they do show what the unit is capable of. Down the bottom, we have a panic button and that's designed that if we've got something that's happening and it's going on and on and getting a little out of control, we can press the panic button. That takes whatever's in the buffer and dumps it. You might think, what would I need that for? But once you've got something that's really getting out of control, a panic button is actually really nice to have. That is a plus, and that's nicely thought through because there are plenty of delay units that don't have that. And while in certain ways it's not necessarily normally if you've got something that's getting a little out of control, 
you can just pull the feedback back. But the nature of how he's implemented this feedback means that he tends to defer towards wanting to go on. So the panic button is kind of nice. There is a bypass button. The bypass button behaves interestingly. Whatever's already made it into the buffer will continue. Whatever has not made it in will not happen. See, so it's possibly best not named bypass. Might almost have been good to turn it the other way round so that you can use it to choose what does or doesn't get picked up. So if you've got this going into a vocal line, um, let's say the vocal line is, we are the heroes. And we don't want the we are to echo, but we want heroes to echo. So the result that we're looking for is we are the heroes, 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 heroes. This is where you would like to have a little button where you can say, I'll press that. And whilst that's pressed in, whatever this is hearing will get echoed. So at the point where your vocalist is singing heroes, you would have the button pressed in. Now, the fact that this is going to work backwards in that way, not really that big a deal. In our automation, we would simply automate our button and then turn the bypass to off the position that we see as the singer sings heroes, and then it's going to have heroes, heroes, heroes. So it's, it's, it's not the most elegant way of making the button, but once you understand how it works, it will work. There's also a tap feature. You can tap this. and it will set delay time based on the, the tempo that you've apparently tapped. Not a big fan of that kind of stuff, but it's there. The discrepancy I do notice is that even though we're in sync mode, which would indicate that it's going to show me um, temp beat divisions, it then swaps to non-synced time. Um, fair enough, you just have to accept that that's what's going to happen. In terms of delay, this is the center of things, of a delay should always be the time section. It's not necessarily the most important, but it's, it's essential to a delay unit. Most people are going to want it in sync mode. Anyone who follows me will know that I'm not a big fan of sync mode, but it's here. You can set various timings. The dot means that it's a dotted version thereof, so that means it's that and a half. So one eighth and one half is going to be one eighth plus one sixteenth. So it's not the same as a triplet, but close in certain ways. So it's just a way of setting up different things. Now you can set those up to be differently on different on each side, or you can link, meaning that Whatever we set on one side will be set to the other side. Most times with delays, I want them to be fairly similar, in which case we can set to linked and then we can offset, which means that it moves the time. The manual suggests that it just moves the right hand channel early or late. Or you can just have it completely unlinked and your offset still works. Personally, I again would rather have sync off simply because while you get the impression that you're doing it perfectly right by using BPM sync, the problem is that you're making something that's not not interesting. A great guitarist, let's say Dave Gilmore, uh, who really is a beautiful guitarist in terms of feel or time, uh, George Benson being another similar sort of guitarist, these guys don't play in time all the time. Uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, part of their greatness, part of their beauty as an artist is that they know how to massage time. And being a mix engineer and using delay uh, it's about knowing how to massage time. So rather than going, I'll, I'll make sure it's right by using this perfect beat division, 
Learned massage time by finding the point at which within this piece it flows beautifully. If you can't be bothered, that's your business. But just understand that if you're always just going to a synced number, out of wall, but that'll be right, is that you are removing your ability to have that magical flow that a Dave Gilmore or a George Benson has. Um, any, any wonderful guitarist, any wonderful player of anything never plays perfectly in time. This whole modern door approach of like everything has to be locked to the, it's just like, yeah, okay. There are situations, disco maybe, but even there, the most beautiful of disco is really quite grooved. The groove's what it's about. So we can set our time up to two seconds, which is plenty of time, generally speaking. We can offset how they behave against each other, or we can simply set them to two different times, as if you're double-clicking returns a... Uh, a control to a default value. Okay, so that's all pretty good in terms of options of what we can do. We have two delay lines which we can make work together. We can make work together but offset one slightly or we can just have them work completely independently. Again with the option to move one of them a little bit. We can sync them to BPM should we want. The second most important thing is feedback. Now you'll notice that I'm not going in order of the knobs. Uh, this is part of where I find the device can get a little unclear. Uh, whether that's just a personal thing, as I say, workflow is a personal thing, but it can just happen that way. So feedback tells us how many times we want that echo to repeat. Let's just kill that off for the moment. So it goes on and on. The feedback is designed to err on the side of adding more value as it goes through. So in other words, it's set up in such a way that it could quite easily get itself into perpetually feeding back or into getting louder and louder, as you see. It, it's part of the nature of the sound or feel of it, but where a delay, feedback or echo, may, you may expect that it's going to fall off. This one tends to have a different sort of a curve. So rather than a, you know, gets louder and gets softer sort of fairly quickly, this has a sort of a curve, so it keeps its level up before it drops off. Nothing wrong per se with that, it's just the nature of the curve for its, its feedback. It tends to keep the level high. There's a ping pong option. Now, I don't notice it make any difference here when the two levels are the same as each other. When the two delay times are separate, then you can keep ping pong off and they will merely tap as, as they're set. Ping pong will then do this. If you are after a very specific, I want this and then I want this, it probably will be easier with sync timing, but if we set, and we can't set specifically, um, let's see, I haven't tried this to be honest. No, it doesn't look like, oh yeah, we can. So with control, I can get specific. So control and I've got to say, it goes from sort of not moving to moving fast, so it's uh, 0.3. So I guess it depends how much you're moving or how fast you seem to be moving your mouse. Um, but i got to say, 
this feels a little complex to set up. I, but there are a lot of um, a lot of delay units that really are not super easy to do classic ping pong delays. So if we've got this. So our times are set up. It has its frustrations if you're trying to achieve a very specific thing, but given time you work out how to do that, I know that most people are just going to go, oh, well, there's, there's one quarter and one half. It's easy, so why are you saying it's not easy? But that's a very narrow way of doing it, as I keep saying. So that, that bit's easy, but if you're looking to make them a one quarter and hitting ping pong, you don't get the ping pong. You have to then say, okay, well, what, what is it? Is this a one quarter or, or is this a, uh, a one eighth? Where is my there? In which case you've got to unlink them again and it would be one quarter. So the only way that seems to be able to really lock those to that is with sync. Yes, it would work with non-BPM, but the problem with non-BPM is that there is just this inherent assumption that... Um, everything's going to be kind of loose. And even though control lets you get a little tighter, it's hard to get fairly specific values. Now that can be good and that can be bad. Uh, it would be kind of nice perhaps if you could type in the values, but that's part of how this, this thing works in the real world that you're going to um, end up with slightly loose numbers. So spend your time, play around with it, see how you go. And you can get really rather cool results. I'm not going to show you what the right results are because that's none of my damn business and nor can I show you what the right results are because that is down to what your song is actually doing. We can also unlink and this can be really interesting in a mix. So we can set so that our echo, as you see, has gone off to one side. So it can be a really nice way when you're working with a sound you may have the sound itself pan to one side and echo out to the other, or you may have that pan sound panned to that side, but not hard panning, because I have, as you know, some issues with hard panning. I think you can end up with some problems. But if you want to travel out that way, then you can pan your sound a little off and then have your echoes move further out, which gives this feeling of spreading. So that is a, a slightly unusual feature to have, but really rather cool. I mean, you can get into the ping pong thing on there, but I quite like that. That, that really is nice. We've then got, obviously, the ability to mix. If we're using this as a send unit, let's just link these back up again then we can get rid of our dry and just have our wet signal. For some reason it allows us to really boost our overall level, not quite sure why we would do that, but it does have the option. Dry. And then we can choose how we mix in. Again, that, there is no right or wrong here, comes down to what you're doing inside your mix. Drive. There is a drive unit with a couple of different modes. They are 
are not in the manual. The manual is not up to date with the physical product. Disappointed in that, sometimes tells manuals are good, sometimes they are just out of date. This is out of date. Uh, the drive can add some extra spark or body to your echoes. Commonly you will use that in combination with the filter. So we've got a low pass, which apparently is a 6 dB per octave. I'm not sure whether that really is the case. I, I feel like it's probably a little stronger, 12, but I don't care. And then resonance. Resonance does tend to make that signal a lot louder. It, it, it gets pretty peaky. So it probably is a version of or similar to the uh, the filter resonance uh, in things like his uh, his 101. Uh, I, I kind of get the feeling there might be some of that sand. Good on him. They are lovely sanding filters. This is possibly not the way I would put a filter in, but it's his device, and I think it's kind of cool. If you're finding that it gets too, then just lower it. But note how it adds a real timbre. So your your um, filter here is not necessarily a transparent tone filter. It's you see it as very much being a full on synth filter. Resonance doesn't seem to affect the um, high pass filter. If you're looking for a delay that's going to add character into its echoes, then this is definitely a real contender in that respect. Over here, there is the oddly named post button. Again, this is not in the manual. Um, disappointed over that. Be nice to have this explained better, and this is part of my frustration with its routing. It's it's. It works, but it's unclear. It, it just strikes me as messy. At the moment, you can see it says that we've got signal, signal hitting the drive, going to the filter. It doesn't tell us where the delay is in this. I, that, to me, is disappointing. If you've got the picture, why don't you show me where the actual delay tap is in here as well? But if we hit post, what that means is that feedback goes post drive, uh, but filter sits right on the end, so it's like a global filter rather than a, in the middle of things. So here how you get a very different result. Generally you're going to want to leave it like this because that's a, the nicest way to get those results. But if you feel like it's making too much effect as time goes by, as each tap goes through, you can change your routing. But just remember that this filter is not, uh, it's not just a broad tone filter, it's actually capable of being a full synth filter and a fairly fiery one at that. So there's your main functions of being able to bring in a delay time or set of times to push into a drive a little to put it through a filter which is then within your feedback path and then we've got modulation this again i find a little oddly laid out but it does make sense once you get there so depth relating to time or depth relating to filter. So let's just...
So that's taking the filter and doing this to it. Um, not a favorite thing of mine, I must say, in, inside a delay, but why not, I guess? It does help the, um, does help the thing to move around. And maybe if we were to be playing in a, uh, a reverb type space, not like that necessarily. This is where I, I, I struggle with this one as a uh, as a reverb. Let's get that. It just feels more complex than what I would be used to, but everybody has different ideas about what they want in a delay or an echo unit. This is starting to give us that reverby sort of thing. The whole idea here being We should be able to bring in let's say 32, reset that, turn these all down. Then we get a chorus. generally more effective when they are the same, but you get different kind of a chorus when you spread them out. Width will change your LFO shape from being the same left to right to being the opposite left to right. So it's just a way of offsetting them. A little bit of offset will give you a fairly natural sort of stereo. That'll give you a full wide stereo, which sounds great on its own, but can cause you problems when you get into mixing. All comes down to what you're wanting or needing in your piece. If we take this it's it's hard to get reliable sounds. It has its things that it's going to do really well and things it's not going to do so well. So if I'm trying to turn this into a flanger or a chorus, we can get things and go, yeah, that's like that, but it's not the same as getting a flanger or, or a chorus device. And this is where I have my frustrations with it because when I pick out a delay, sometimes I know exactly what I'm looking for. Sometimes I don't. I just, I, I want to see where a thing can take me. And the more versatile the device, the more it's able to take me different places, uh, the more likely I am just to grab it in the first place. This one, possibly just through not spending the time with it to find its special points, I'm prone to just going, 
I'm not getting what I want and will go to move to something where I feel like I'm more likely to get what I want. But you can get interesting results out of this for sure. It just feels like it's got a particular set of outcomes already in mind. And if you're not within those outcomes, then it's probably not going to help you very well. What's right and wrong? Not really going to put any judgment on that. Well, let's run through the good and bad. Then we'll run into some examples of just trying it, doing this, trying it, doing that. Okay, what's good about it is it has, in the right situations, a really great sound. Uh, in other situations, it can kind of fail, but it's always got an interesting sound. That filter means that you can end up with some frustrations and of it just overdoing itself. Um, just starting to howl basically um that that i find annoying as to how quickly it wants to howl it'd be nice to be able to pull that back so that i could push things harder without it howling the fact that it wants to howl too fast bugs me but in terms of its basic its basic sound it is as nice as any of any other of tal's things tal tends to have a very nice warm VA analog kind of a sound. Um, by VA, I don't mean a, a sort of a thin. It's that idealized digital analog sound, which he delivers really, really nicely. That's part of why I end up being frustrated with it, is because I feel like I, 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 I want to be able to get what I want, and then I can't. Um, so its its sound is good. Its f overall feature set, in the sense that it's got the ability to um, to control our delays and our feedbacks left and right, and it's got a filter and it's got a modulator, um, and that we can basically change some routing along with the, the drive. Yep, all of that is, in theory, really very good. The, the downside is that I just find, again, it seems too quick to, to want to go into, into excessive feedback. And I get the term, the name dub sort of suggests, well, we want that dub repetition tape delay going into feedback kind of thing never really been a big fan of that oddly enough on records yeah it can be great to hear somebody's recording and it's like oh that's cool i i've struggled with it myself always have um so it's a personal thing to a great extent here but that that workflow feels to me disconnected uh and and it frustrates me because there are a lot of cool things about it I almost feel like I wish I could say to Tal hey can I draw you the architecture you just take all your DSP and make it work to that architecture but again this is coming from the guy who has made so many delay units of his own um, so don't let me necessarily say to you this is a bad device i don't think it's a bad device it's just a device that while it has a beautiful sound i struggle to feel like it's going to reliably deliver the things that i want uh as i try to what if i do this what if i do that i feel like i get hit with it oh no i didn't want it to do that as you saw here already quite a few times it was like oh uh, that's not what i wanted to have happen um other people will feel quite differently about it. So it's one of those ones, grab it, spend some time playing with it. You're going to find that you that you gel with it really quickly and you're like, oh, wow, that's just what I was looking for. Or you're going to find, like me, it's not really gelling with you. And there's nothing wrong with that because there are lots and lots of delay units out there and one of the other ones will gel with you. But at 25, even though it doesn't entirely gel, if I could find that point, which would be if I could set my own default. So when I turn it on, it's far less likely to give me a sound that I don't want. Um, it's going to give me a sound I do want. Then I would probably be a little more likely to pick it up for the things that I know that it is going to sound really good for. And we'll run through some of those in a moment. Uh, so overall, good or bad... I think the DSP, the basic sound of it, the TAL sound is great. It's always a great sound from TAL. Its usability, that's going to come down to whether you personally connect with it 
or not. So let's move out a little bit and look at some of the things that we might do with it. If we take our sand, now the sand is set up with some, so we can go from a, and hear how lovely that sounds. We get really, really nice results. If we pull that back. that drive so we'll pull that out let's put it in a different oscillator so we've got an immediately a fat sound Just that really nice, rich feeling that comes with it. So there we're using the filter and the LFO. And that works out really nicely. Uh, just really got to watch that, that tendency to go straight into feedback. I know that this is driving a lot of level, but it's that tendency to over feedback. Maybe seeing the technologies there, he's got the DSP, perhaps with a little rearrangement of the architecture and maybe even some little buttons that as you push drive in here, you have the option of allowing it to keep its level, to push its level into which is a way of, of setting up delay units or a way of offsetting some of that drive so that we're not immediately pushing all of that extra level in. Same with this, it's pushing in a lot of level. Fair enough, this is how this works. But it might be nice if there was a way to shed some of that level before it hits the feedback and takes a feedback that I've set as being okay and suddenly is not okay. So there are so many ways that we can be upsetting our feedback. Or the other option being um, 
which I see in a few delays, to use a, a limiter or something like that to stop that from getting out of control. But if that's the kind of sound that I'm after, it does sound really great. Very Gary Newman sort of sound. It's not a way I normally would use a delay like this if I were thinking, oh, I wanted to play around with the filter sweeping thing. I would be far more likely to be doing it on the synth, but maybe that's just too predictable. Uh, and maybe putting it onto the, the, the um, delay here adds a different kind of sound so that The sand is great, just that slight issue with it tending to... Again, the sand is nicer post. If we unlink these... doesn't have as big a difference in terms of hearing the uh, the filter move because that filter movement is still the same whereas if we had the filter moving on the synth then the two separate delays would pick that up and carry them differently in time so that's why we don't hear as exciting a difference as we might anticipate So that's a, that's a really, really nice sound that we're capable of getting. <laughs> Plan that, that uh, it gives us shades of um, Corey Hutz and his sunglasses at night. That was set to ping pong, so let's have a look at uh, their uh, linked, of course. You got to get your timings right for for that to uh, to feel good, uh, but kind of cool. can make nice chorus uh, with um, mono or stereo. So nice sound, I think that 
a lot of Tal's thought process has gone into using this filter in the middle of the delay to create this different sound in the middle. And while that is cool in the right situation, it's not as interesting a delay for some reason when you don't use this. The, the drive. is somehow not quite what I would hope for. I'm not going to say it's wrong uh, in any way. It's just not quite... The sound is not is not always what I'd hoped for. Uh, but it's possible to do very beautiful work, so there's no... So I leave it to you to decide how you feel about it. My final thoughts on it are Tal's got this lovely Tal sound. His filter is, is great, but the question is, is his filter great in this situation for broad usage? Uh, when it achieves exactly this, the effect or sound, yeah, of course it's great but it sometimes feels to me like it's, it's, it's got that one sound and it's only going to deliver that one sound. Um, drive, I, I struggle with to get a feeling of like, oh, that's, you know, that's made it nicer. Uh, the modulation, simple, but for some reason I, I struggle to get the feeling that I want, but I'll come back later and listen to something that I've done with it and go, you know, that really sounds nice. So it's a nice sound. It's just a workflow or a final process that I don't really connect with, which I think is a shame. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good delay for other people because I hear of a lot of other people going, wow, it's super, I love it, it's so much part of my sound, in which case, good on you. Because if they were asked to have the same opinion on something that I love, they may well go, I don't get it. Um, in which case, that's absolutely fine. They don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to get this. Um, it's uh, it's obviously got plenty going for it, but just a workflow that 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 you've got to feel comfortable with. It's got to deliver the things that that you want, and I I struggle to find it as a. Oh, I would reach out and grab this every single time. Uh, and the only way to do that would be to start to make a whole pile of changes to it, in which case it's not going to be the same device that it currently is. So no particular way to say that it's it's good or bad. I like Tal's stuff generally across the board. I think he does a good job. I think it's wonderful having Tal there as a developer. Would I like to see him make a different delay? Well, that's his business. Um, because the world is absolutely chock full of delays which are rather samey. Um, this one is not samey, and that's a good thing about it. For some reason, its not sameyness is somehow not where I want it to be, which is a personal decision. Uh, so again, go try it. Spend some time with it. There are some things that it can do that are really rather cool, um, but there are some things that you might find annoying or just fit you perfectly you got to decide which either way bottom line if they have any questions about uh, about this video or about delays in general then subscribe first please and ask on below and once i'm aware of it i shall uh, provide what answer i think is uh, is most useful for you and for the the viewer in general there's also hirehertz.com uh, which is a slightly different channel of information. Pop on over there, have a look, maybe sign yourself up because you may find that, uh, that you value some of the info that comes through there as well.
Either way, you have a great day.